Master Chef is looking for its next champion. These eight amateurs are the last chef standing. They have battled to stay in the competition. Medic! Medic! That's not good. Oh, come on, you shouldn't have had that whiskey. We've got a bit of a problem here. It's burnt. I'm a bit disappointed. Today, they face a very different challenge. I wouldn't want to face the clowns with an empty tray. Ah. Come on, get hot. Having said that I'm going to deliver it on time, I'm really better. Cold tempura of edge. Ooh. This is my round to shine. I want this so badly. Eight great amateur cooks. An emotional journey to get this far, and they now have to perform beyond belief. There isn't room for error. I've really got to raise my game, you know, in order to stay in. Now there are only eight of us left, but I think I've got as good a chance as any of them. This competition, it's so tough, especially at this stage when you've got the best of the best that you're up against. The step from the amateur to the professional is a big one, but you are on your way. Over the next three days, we're going to expose you to a very different style of food. You're going to be cooking the most extraordinary vegetarian food. And for you today, we have a special treat because we are going to bring in a man who is a master in this style of food. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Yotam Ottolenghi. Welcome. Today, I'm giving you four of my favorite recipes I'm not a vegetarian myself, but I want to show you guys how you can achieve things with vegetables in a way that you didn't think was possible. This is an extraordinary thing for you. Open your minds, ladies and gentlemen. One hour and 10 minutes, do something special. I wish you loads of luck. Yotam Ottolenghi understands how to celebrate the greatness of vegetarian food and he has no boundaries whatsoever. And that's why it's so exciting. I think one needs to liberate themselves from the idea that every meal has to have a piece of meat in the center of it, and then the sky's the limit. I've cooked vegetarian a few times, but it tends to just be a roast dinner without the meat on the plate. Usually when I cook vegetarian, it's because I've forgotten to take meat out of the freezer. Tim and Alice are both making the poached stuffed onion skins. The stuffed onion is a dish that challenges you because it's fiddly. The onions need to be poached properly so you can actually play with them and stuff them. Hi, Alice. Hello. What's your first reaction when you hear vegetarian? I think difficult because I find it hard to pack the flavours in. But you really need to make sure that all the flavour is there before it goes into the onion because then it's too late. Yeah, true. And so you can't take it out. And don't burn it. Okay. Hi, Tim. Hi. Scary? A little bit scary, yeah. Why? Well, it's not something I've cooked before. I mean, it may not be exactly right, but it, I'm yeah. going to make it my own in a way. Good luck. Thank you. You've had 15 minutes. Quarter of an hour gone. Jackie and Annie are making the sweet corn polenta with an aubergine tomato sauce. It is quite a struggle for me to cook dishes without meat or fish. I cook vegetarian food virtually every day. I should absolutely shine in this round. 
The sweet corn polenta dish, they really have to get right because sweet corn is very, very sweet. So it's very important to balance it with saltiness. And the saltiness comes from feta. How do you feel about cooking vegetarian? I'm really happy about cooking yeah? vegetarian food. I'm a vegetarian. You are? Yes. Okay, so this is so, right up your alley, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. And how do you feel in this environment where everybody's probably, I assume, a non-vegetarian? It's been amusing watching their reaction, but they all think that I've got the advantage today, whereas I feel the pressure's on me to prove... You're a worthy vegetarian. Yes, absolutely. Annie. Hello. No fish and no chicken. No. It's very unusual for me. Is it? Yeah, very so much. So you're outside your comfort zone. I'm loving it so far, actually. It's a wonderful set of ingredients. You're loving it? So far. Yes. I don't know. I don't believe you. You've had 30 minutes. I'm quite excited about vegetarian food. I think it pushes people to be creative. I think I'm in real trouble. If I can get through this, I think I can get through anything. Tom and Kennedy have been given the chili black pepper tofu. The black pepper tofu is an explosion of flavors. It's so hot and spicy. Tofu is huge. Tom, yes. you're feeling confident? Ish. 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 Have you ever cooked? Tofu before. A couple of times, yes. Yeah? Yeah. What do you think about the quantities of chilies and black pepper? It's a little more than I'd normally use, but actually I like hot food, so um, yeah, I think it's great. I'm hoping it'll taste as good as it'll look. Me too. <laughs> it's hard work, eh? I can see you're all sweaty and everything. Yeah. yeah. Do you like tofu? Uh, no. No. Not yet. Well, I can tell you a little secret. I hated tofu up until about a year ago. Okay. And now I've got like three recipes with tofu in it. I hope to convince you that it's wonderful. You know, you've got like so many peppercorns, so much chili in there. How do you think you're going to stand the heat? I'm sure it will uh, all work itself out. You have belief? I don't think that's going to be that hot. You've got 30 minutes left. Sarah and James are making the grilled vegetable halloumi salad. I want to see the contestants keeping the vegetables crunchy. I want them to grill them properly to give them nice color. I'm not a vegetarian, I never have been a vegetarian, and it's very unlikely I'm ever going to be a vegetarian. There needs to be a slab of meat or a lump of fish on my plate. James, I heard you're not a great vegetarian. I'm a bit of a carnivore, yeah. yeah you I look like, like a carnivore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You look like a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, I'm, I'm, in, I'm enjoying it. It's, it's nice to try different people's food, you know, and different cuisine. You know, it's meals that I'll eat without meat and fish. So you still, yeah. there's still hope for you? Uh, I, I won't pray. <laughs> I think I've done OK to be one of eight, but I want to hang around much longer. Fingers crossed. Are you stressed? No, I love vegetables. Yes? I do. Very much. What do I hear? An accent? Italian. Okay, you love vegetables. I love sure. vegetables. So this is like almost like second nature to you. Wow. Working with projects. Yeah, in this kitchen nothing is second nature. <laughs> Everything is in doubt. Everything is in doubt indeed. Don't be stressed no. because this is really simple. All you do is grill your vegetables. Yes. I mean what can go wrong? <laughs> A lot of things can go wrong. Just ten minutes, please. At the end of today, two more contestants will be going home. They have to keep proving they can cook flawlessly. Last two minutes.
Finished. Time's up. First up are Jackie and Annie, who have cooked the sweet corn polenta with feta, topped with an aubergine, tomato and oregano sauce. Annie. I've got a sweet tooth, I like sweet things, but that has got a very, very sweet finish, because I don't pick up oregano and I don't pick up chunks of feta. I don't mind not getting chunks of feta, but it's just very, very processed, so you don't even get chunks of corn in terms of texture. But I can finish it right now, straight away, because it's just so delicious. I love the sweetness of the corn, and I love the bits of feta still prominent inside. Really well cooked. Thank you. Thank you. Jackie, so you're the queen of polenta now, right? Yes. I mean, what can I say? <laughs> I love the fact that you can actually see bits of feta and it's coarse, it looks the part. Really nice. Really, really, really nice. It is quite sweet and the feta is salty, so this sort of balancing act and a little surprise as you go, it's fantastic. Thank you. That was absolutely brilliant. Cooking for one of my food heroes. It was like, oh my God, he got him, likes my food. Oh. I was up against a vegetarian expert, which was always going to be tough. So I'm thrilled for her that she did such a good job. I just wish I could have matched it, maybe. Tim and Alice's dish is poached onions with a tomato, feta, parsley and garlic stuffing served with a watercress, pistachio and orange blossom salad. Technically, you encase all the whole stuffing in the onion, which is not as sort of straightforward as other things might be, so that's good. The stuffing that is a little bit soggy, a little bit soft, and I would have liked a little bit more texture there. But all in all, I think it's a good achievement. Tim. Stuffed onions or blintzes? Well, the recipe said to roll them into a cigar shape. I was thinking long cigar, not fat cigar. You were thinking about cigar run over by truck? Uh, they did deflate a bit, yeah. Tim, my commiserations, because they look quite terrible. It's good flavours, and the salad's well-dressed, so I'd be happy to eat it. Not to look at it, but to eat it, so well done. Thank you. Obviously it was ugly. I didn't think it was that ugly. But apparently it was really ugly. Sarah and James have made the char-grilled asparagus with tomatoes, courgettes and halloumi, dressed with basil oil. James. For me, I would just like to mess it all up. It doesn't have to be so busy and so precise. It needs more tomato, just because the cheese is rich. But the flavors are good, and all the components, you actually feel all of them in the mouth, and that's, that's a good sign for a dish, that nothing sort of gets lost. Well done. Sarah? It's not too smoky. You still feel freshness of asparagus, freshness of courgette, and so the balance of flavor is fantastic. Thank you. Absolutely chuffed. He's such a veggie guru. Finally, Tom and Kennedy's dish, which is the black pepper, chili and ginger fried tofu served with steamed rice. Tom. You can actually see the chilies, the shallots, the ginger, it's all got texture here. So it looks fantastic and you really want to eat it. It's delicious, it's wonderful, and it's just what you want. Colors, spice, and bold flavors. It's just fantastic. Thank you very much. Your turn next, Kennedy. <clears throat> the actual cooking is good. 
But the peppercorns, when I came to you, were having a war with them, and I think you lost because they stayed more or less the way they were when you started. I can't say just because I've done that, I'm suddenly very comfortable around vegetarian food because that would be a big lie. Nothing's changed, I'm still pretty scared. That was nice food. I'm quite surprised, being just vegetables. It's good that you learn these things. It's good that you do actually, I do now actually know how to cook tofu. You've got some great dishes, and I think they did you proud. I think they did your food justice. They're a great bunch, I think. I like Jackie. I think she had a good understanding of what the polenta was all about. And she has a sensitivity that I didn't see in others. I loved her work. Tim's onions had to be the biggest disaster of the day, but his dish actually tasted good. You could see that they, they know what they're doing. They're trying really hard. That's the point of it, isn't it? I really do hope they've learned from you because they've got a major challenge tomorrow. I mean, a major challenge. With the masterclass over, the eight contestants must now impress with their own vegetarian food. Good morning and welcome to Peckham Rye, my old stomping ground. This is where I grew up. Now listen. Today, you are the sole caterers for these people that run the circus. They've got a show to put on, people have bought tickets, they've got to be properly fed, and they can't be late. We're going to split you into two groups. Jackie, James, Alice and Kennedy, you'll be cooking lunch service for the circus riggers. Sarah, Annie, Tom and Tim, you'll be cooking dinner for the performers. Try and impress, no easy task. Those of you who are preparing lunch, I suggest you get going. Good luck, off you go. Tonight is opening night at the circus. The lunch team have just two hours to feed and win over 20 riggers with their best vegetarian dishes. Whether you're a rigger or whether you're a performer, you are doing hard physical work. You want a hearty meal to make something attractive yet substantial and vegetarian. That's not an easy task at any time. Alice has designed her starter around vegetarian haggis parcels with a whiskey cream sauce. I actually found it really exciting working with Ottolenghi yesterday. And I've realised that vegetarian food isn't rubbish like I might have used to think it was. James is also making a starter, sticking to a classic mushroom and truffle risotto. I know what it means to have a, a good meal after a good day's graft. And I don't think I've ever come home fancy in a truffle risotto. <laughs> Kennedy will be making one of the mains, a wild mushroom and spinach tart with leeks. It's an interesting challenge. Not ideal, being out here in a, in a tent, trying to make this uh, vegetarian food interesting. And Jackie's dish of vegetable dumplings in a spicy yoghurt curry will be the second main. They're doing a really tough job out there. They are going to be hungry. Do they look like people who eat veggie food? It's a bit of a curveball, this one, really, isn't it? 30 minutes gone. Alice's vegetarian haggis stuffing is ready, but she still has plenty to do. As a meat eater, I really like this dish lots of pulses and beans and nuts. It's really nice, it tastes like meat. I promise, it really does. And as a meat eater, I'd rather something that tasted like meat. 
Alice, you believe this dish is going to suit big armed hard working guys? I think so. My veggie haggis is great and I've really spiced it well and I think they'll like a bit of whiskey, so I'm fairly confident. The success of James's risotto depends upon him making the perfect mushroom stock. This dish is all about punchy flavour. You need to literally get a mouthful of it and get punched in the mouth. Kennedy needs to blind bake his pastry and bring together his wild mushroom filling. I think it gives them enough energy to go on and continue rigging. You've got under an hour left now, please. Jackie, big smile on your face because this is the sort of food that you love. I'm really excited about making this food, but I am actually having a touch of the nerves, and I think it's because it means so much to me. But the other thing is you've got huge amounts of work to do. Yeah, Dumplings I have, to I have, make. I have. The bread hasn't been started. No. Sauce, is a curry sauce on? No. Are you going to get this done? I know. I'm, I'm really worried, actually. I've given myself really rather a lot to do, and um, I'm ha I am having a slight panic about that now. Sorry, I, I've got I... the jumping beans back no, today, really? isn't Can I... it? Good to see you. <laughs> Go on, get on with it. Cheers. I'm not going to get this opportunity again. This is my round to shine. I want this so badly. I just hope those riggers love her food. With 20 minutes to go, Alice starts on the delicate wee dram pearls. She's mixing whiskey with alginate to form intensely flavoured whiskey balls. Peckham Rye or Park Lane? <laughs> I didn't know the clientele we were cooking for, but I thought it'd be exciting for whoever had it. If you press it, it'll still burst, see? Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, you got whiskey balls. You've got whiskey balls. Brilliant. Brilliant. Guys, just ten minutes left till the blokes who put that tent up come in for their lunch. Over here for lunch. Come on. Personally, being a lover of meat, I'm not overly fond of vegetarian food. The boys here particularly like meat. They're very fond of barbecues. Pork is nice and the uh, um, steak. We like chicken pie, sausages as well. I don't know if there's any vegetarian people here. I'm not sure about that, but. Yeah, they will enjoy it, yeah. <laughs> I just want to get it up, not just slopped on a plate like most risottos generally are. OK, guys, here we go. It's 12 o'clock. Come on, go, go! Finally, both starters are ready to go. Risotto, anybody? Vegetarian haggis and potato cake. Everybody got grub? OK, enjoy. Thank you. Alice has made a spiced vegetarian haggis parcel on a Scottish potato scone with whiskey cream sauce, neep and tatty crisps and wee dram pearls. It looks beautiful. I'm very impressed with the presentation. I hope it tastes as good as it looks. Oh, okay. The haggis need a little bit of whiskey in the cream because it was too much cream, not whiskey enough. <laughs> the potato scone was delicious. Um, cream sauce, very nice. Alice's vegetarian haggis is a great looking dish. It has real texture to it. The warmth of the whiskey on the background of all those other lovely flavours are great. I've got to take a bow to that girl's ambition, John. Whiskey balls and haggis in a tent on peck and rye, that's not bad at all. While James has prepared mushroom and truffle risotto with basil oil and parmesan crisps. Good. 
Very good. I like the mushrooms, but we normally like not eating a lot here. Mushrooms. I don't know why, but very nice. The risotto was tasty, but the pumps and crepes was like sour. It was just I didn't like that. Yeah. I've never eaten mushrooms before. You've never eaten mushrooms yeah. before. I think it tastes nice. nice. It tastes nice. Yeah. yeah. Really nicely presented dish. I love the tang of the basil around the outside of it. I think that really salty cheese is good. But the risotto as a whole needs a bit more seasoning and it could be a lot wetter. Listen, the stars are gone and cleared. They're now waiting for their main. Come on, get hot. With pourries, the oil needs to be really, really hot. Just, like, wishing it to get hotter quicker. That's not worked. It's a rustic tart, it's not something pretty. These are working folk. Oh, that's You've got two minutes. Jackie and Kennedy, it's time for main courses, please. Let's do it. Go. Seasonal dumplings in a spicy yogurt curry. With like mushroom, well mushroom tart. I really hope you enjoy it. Okay. Kennedy has made wild mushroom and spinach tart with creamed mustard leeks and a fondant potato. I had the mushroom tart. It was nice. I enjoyed. It's tasty. Tasty. Good. It looks an absolute sight. Potato fondants aren't square, they're some sort of weird shape. The tart themselves are falling all over the place. And Jackie has made seasonal vegetable dumplings in a spicy yogurt curry served with crispy puri breads and kachumba salad. Bread's a little greasy. Uh, roll up, roll up, block up your arteries. Give that a little rigor. Not if you want your rigor to put a tent up tomorrow, you don't. I think it's a bit too spicy, too much. But it's still good. I'm enjoying it. No, I'm afraid that's not going to do it for me. <laughs> the sauce is powdery. What can I say about the puri bread? Um, it's oil, basically. Crispy oil. Um, so I really don't particularly like this meal at all. Oh, God. Please don't let there be loads of left food on the plate. At least you gave them something they've seen before. I'm afraid the curry, I can't remember exactly what you call it, the curry parcels I, I thought was awful. Was okay. In opinion. Um, I thought the curry paste was powdery, it didn't complement what was inside. It's pure, I, I thought it was just oil, crispy oil. It matters massively to me. It matters massively to me. You know, my life has been defined by being a vegetarian. My children have been brought up vegetarians. And I went and put weird food in front of people who already think vegetarians are weird. Oh, God. Oh, God, a vegetarian. <laughs> Please, I've just got to go outside for a bit. It's mid-afternoon, and the circus performers have started their final rehearsals. The dinner team now have just two hours before they have to serve. We're feeding the performers now, John. The stars of the show. I mean, these people are athletes. They are going to really care about what they eat. Annie's vegetarian starter is a trio of beetroot, 
consisting of tart tatin, soup, and beetroot hummus. I'm effectively producing three dishes on one plate. To get it done in time, it's going to be a challenge. Annie's dish is so ambitious. Can you really pull that off in two hours in a tent? Sarah is also making a starter of a pepper bake with aubergine a la parmigiana. A bit worried because of the environment. I've never cooked like this before, but I'm hoping to be fine. Tim's main is a vegetable tempura bento containing a variety of Japanese fried and battered veg. So the idea of these bento boxes is you have different layers, is that right? That's right. So you start off with one lot, yep. you take away another layer, and then you eat what's underneath. That's right. I've got a, a lot of, you know, interesting Japanese stuff. To me, none of it's that weird, but I have a history of thinking things aren't exotic or weird when they actually are. For the second main, Tom is making a spiced pumpkin tart. It's quite hearty and it's got quite a lot of flavour and it's not too veggie. So I'm hoping that the carnival folk will like it. Four very ambitious cooks in that tent today. Some may say too ambitious. I'm worried that one of these might not make it. One of these may be heading for a fall. had half an hour already. Do you hear me? Half an hour gone. Annie, you have set yourself too much here, haven't you, surely? I have set myself a very hard task, yes, but I thought that it was time to step it up a bit. I'm really concerned that you won't actually get all this done. I know I can get it done. I've timed it out. I've worked it out carefully, but I do need to get on. With three different elements on her dish, Sarah is feeling the pressure. I'll be fine with these little friends here uh, in the oven. Then I can smile a little bit. <laughs> You've had an hour. You're halfway. With still an hour to go, Tim is already frying his vegetable tempura. You're not going to do this now, are you? I'm just trying to get stuff out of the way. Cold tempura veg? This is how they eat in Japan, actually. <laughs> they do. Whoop. It'll be good. I love vegetable tempura. Hot, steaming, but not from Tim. He's going to serve it cold, because apparently they do that in Japan. need to get the pies in the oven. I think not serving pie would be a big problem. Good to see you kept clean here, Tom. I'm not sure if you're being sarcastic or not now. Well, it's about the cleanest you've been so far. It's still not clean, though. OK, I know. Cleanish. You have just ten minutes left before the starter goes. I've certainly got a lot to work to do, Stan. Right now, Sarah is close to getting in her right tits. She looks behind time and she's got the starters. I don't want to look like I'm panicking, but got to get going. Annie is also up against it. She still has to make her soup and beetroot hummus. Having said that, I'm going to deliver it on time. I really better. I wouldn't want to face the clowns with an empty tray.
minutes. Just two minutes. Three, six, and four, I think. I've lost count. Take it, take it, take it. Do you like some beetroot? Very delicious. Cut three ways. Mediterranean vegetables, aubergine alla parmigiana. There you go, I really hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Excuse me, where's the food? <laughs> sorry, Jan, we're ser serving ten, yeah? Mm -hmm. How That's... many have you served? I'm sorry? How many have you served? I've served ten. What are you looking at me like that for? Because I feel a little slightly gormless. A bit... <laughs> freaking out kind of thing. I've just been in the tent, you're one short. Am I? Come on, move, 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 move. Come on, get it out there. Run safely. Apologies, I'm missing one. I can't even count anymore. How can you not count to ten? I accept my apologies, sorry. Can't count to ten. Sarah has made a Savoy wrapped yellow and red pepper bake, an aubergine and olive ratatouille, and aubergine a la parmigiana with pesto. <laughs> I can't count anymore. Ooh. Overall, I'm happy with my dish and I hope they like it. I really liked the ratatouille. It was very pleasant. I liked the oily saltiness and the olive mixed together very nicely. Aubergine and parmesan and the ratatouille was a little crisp in some places, but other than that, it was excellent. Two bakes were delish. I could happily have more. Happily. Sarah's put a huge amount of work into this. I really like the idea of the two towers. It's a lot prettier than I expected. I do like uh, melanzani parmigiano. It's lovely, it's classic. Annie's starter is a beetroot tasting plate of beetroot tart tatin, beetroot and apple soup, beetroot and walnut hummus, all served with horseradish cream. I'm really happy. I've done everything I can do now. I got all the dishes out on time. It looked good on the plate. I just really, really hope they enjoy it. The tart was good. Of all the things on the beetroot plate, definitely what I thought tasted the best was the beetroot soup. The soup was really good. I actually liked the walnut hummus and I didn't think I was going to. I love this beetroot hummus. That's a new one on me. I mean, I think they are lovely. I mean, she's done an absolutely brilliant job. I totally agree with you. Ready to go, Tim? Ready to go, Tom? How much stuff can you get in one box? Don't mess it up now. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, go! Are you from Japan? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Dozo. Here you go. And there are two layers, so please take off the top layer when you're ready. Tim has made vegetable tempura bento box with vegetarian dashi, roasted romanesco, kimpira carrots, quail's eggs with matcha salt, plum wine jelly, rice and pickles. There was a Japanese girl in there, so that's the real test. That would settle our dispute, I guess, of whether or not it's OK to have cold tempura. Cold hot tempura, I think. I was expecting more like hot and crispy, but it's quite cold. I was quite disappointed it wasn't hot. This is the first time I've tried the Japanese beetle box and it's very nice. I'm, I'm impressed. Tim has done a huge amount of work, lots of extraordinary flavours in there. Like the pickled vegetables, love the plum wine, cracking amount of work got in there. 
Tom has made a spiced pumpkin tart with broad bean basil puree, caraway seed cabbage, and a fondant potato. I had the pumpkin pie, it's delicious. I've never tasted anything like that before. It's a really nice arrangement of spices and stuff. I didn't like it at all. It was too spicy for me, far too spicy. The only nice thing was the potato. I didn't really like the board bean green stuff. Sorry. <laughs> I think I've seen a lot better things from Tom. The broad bean puree isn't that good, and the potato fondant is almost non-existent. No flying colours from me. The contestants have survived two services and delivered 80 plates of vegetarian food. Some have impressed with some exceptional dishes. But others have struggled. Now they face their final test. There's no margin for error because two will be going home. We think two of you did an absolutely outstanding job yesterday. Those two, for the time being, your place on MasterChef is secure. Annie? And Alice. Oh, God. <laughs> Off you go. Thank you. It's just the best feeling in the world to know that my place is safe for now. Wow, isn't that incredible? <laughs> I'm really happy. Oh, I'm so flattered. That's fantastic. You six now have just one hour to cook for Greg and I one vegetarian dish. At the end of this, two of you will be going home. Come up and collect your ingredients. There are a few things that I would have hoped were here and aren't here. I have a plan in my head. I think it'll work. One hour, one extraordinary dish. Let's cook. <laughs> shake yesterday. It did rock me a little bit. Why don't we go home today? I can't think about that right now, John, because it's just too upsetting and every time we go there, I'm just getting myself in a mess. To go out, it really would actually break my heart. I didn't just come here just to do a bit of cooking. I came here because I want to change my life and I want to do this. You've had 15 minutes. Kennedy, what's the dish that's going to keep you in this competition? Gorgonzola and tomato tart. You did a tart yesterday. Different tart, though. Multitude of tarts in the world. I'll only deserve to stay if my food is better than two other people. So it better be a good day, otherwise I'm out the door. At 
this point now, I need to pull this one out of the bag. I need to really show something quite eloquent and unbelievably tasty. I can do it. I know I can do it. I'm not going home. No way. I'm not. I'm just... If I do, I'll be devastated, but I'm not putting that in my mind. I'm staying here. I'm afraid you're going to have to put up with me for a little bit longer yet. Halfway, everyone. 30 minutes left. I'm petrified. I need to keep calm and trying to focus, really, and not get the headless chicken syndrome. Sarah, tell me the dish that's going to keep you in the competition. Hopefully, it's a butternut, uh, orange and coconut velouté. Whoa! Can you get it right today, Tim? Absolutely. And if you go home, how are you going to feel? Like crying. Two people out of six. That's not a good chance, especially when it's six people who are great cooks. You've got 15 minutes. Crying out loud. When will you ever? Tom, what's riding on this? Everything. You know, I'm. I'm absolutely desperate to be in this competition. It means the world to me. And I'll be devastated if I left today, so everything's riding on it. Any mistake now could be terminal. Last five minutes. Stop. Time's up. First up is Tom, with chickpea and red lentil spiced cakes, butternut squash chips, a stack of fennel, onion and tomato, and a tomato sauce. All the intensity is in that little tomato and fennel and thyme stack. You take a while before you can taste the cumin coming out of the inside of your patties. There's a combination in my mind that doesn't work, Tom. It's not unpleasant, but those patties, they just fall apart. I don't think you've quite pulled it off today, Tom. Tim has made a sesame and ricotta fagatelli, a type of open ravioli, with vegetarian carbonara, roasted baby fennel and tomatoes. I like the salty cheese you got inside and the sweetness of tomato. I think you're showing a fair bit of skill in, in making the fagatelli. Thank you. I got to say, I'm really surprised by the combination. Sesame seeds, ricotta cheese, fennel, black olives, egg. And the reason I'm surprised, Tim, because I think it's fantastic. Thank you. I think it's really very, very clever indeed. Thank you very much. Just extraordinary. The vegetarian gorgonzola hasn't arrived, so Kennedy's made a tart using gorgonzola, peppers and tomatoes with a basil oil vinaigrette. Is it a bit rough around the edges? Yeah, it's a bit rough around the edges, but I was trying to do the best I could. The issue we've got is that very strong, salty gorgonzola cheese. Very strong, very rich, overpowering the whole.
It's not really a sort of vegetarian celebration. It's more, it's more, more Sunday tea. James has made the only dessert, a fig tart with a sweet ricotta filling, pomegranate syrup, and a walnut snap. It's nicely made pastry, but it's not quite sweet enough, the whole thing. I can't pick out the pomegranate at all. I like that wonderful richness of the fig, the creaminess of the ricotta, the flakiness of your pastry, which is really well made. I didn't expect to see a dish like this from you today, and I'm really impressed. The issue is, though, you've divided the judges. Sarah's dish is a butternut squash, orange, coconut milk and cumin velouté with caramelised oranges and potato crisps. There's nothing wrong with the way you've made your soup, but I don't particularly like the flavour of it. I think orange and butternut squash is a little odd. Technically, it's beautifully made. But I'm not in love with it either. Finally, it's Jackie's dish. A spiced aubergine curry with lentil dal and stuffed parathas. Your dal with its tucker inside it. It's lovely and spicy and very, very rich. Your aubergines are wonderful and creamy and well cooked. I think it's very, very good indeed. Thank you. No grease there today, is there? No. Get in there, Jackie. I mean, that is, that's nice. What a time to get it right. Thank you. Off you go. It's really tough on this one. I've got to say the diversity around the room for me was just brilliant. We know that Alice and Annie are safe. Now we have got to decide which of these two are the weakest? This is how I see it. Tim's dish was by far the cleverest, by far the most skillful. I think he did a brilliant job. Just cooked his way straight into the next round. Feel great. That went so well. John said it was fantastic, and that's exactly what I'm going for. Next best dish? Jackie. I agree. That's not the Jackie. What a massive, big pound of bunch of flavour that was in a bowl. I think she deserves to stay, absolutely. Yesterday, I let myself down, and today, I didn't let myself down. I went out there, I kept my nerve, and I still pulled it off, so I'm really, really pleased. I'm really pleased. Tim and Jackie, definitely in the competition. That leaves us now with James, Kennedy, Tom, and Sarah. Well, I'll tell you who I've got a real issue with, and that's Kennedy. He did a tomato and cheese tart, not the most ambitious uh, attempt. I've got to agree. I think the idea of making pastry, making a tart, is a great thing to do, but at this stage of the competition... I tried to be as inventive as I could, but there's a lot of good-looking stuff out there, which is a bit frightening. Sarah, butternut squash with orange. The combination was always going to be a strange one. But we both agreed it was a really well-made soup. With Tom, I don't think he had a very strong round yesterday, and I don't think he had a very strong round today. Since we've taken away his meat and fish, he's, he's struggled. This is the first time for me that I've had not great feedback. It was just not as good as it should have been. I've got problems with James. Oh, you can't have problems with James after he's done today. He actually cooked a really fine-looking dessert. Do you think he was fine-looking? We ended up with two oblongs of pastry with a syrup, which is sugar and water, John. I mean, and that's it. That's the sum total of it. It's going to be well tight. You know, I've won John over, not so much Greg. Look, who are we sending home? Well, I think I know who we should be sending home.
Of course, having negative feedback from both judges isn't great. I hope they still believe in me and uh, give me a chance. There's no more chances, this is it. Whether I've done enough or not remains to be seen. I've come too far to go home. I'm a determined person, I'm a very competitive person. I'm not ready to go yet. There's a lot I want to do in this competition yet. You know, I'd be massively disappointed if I went home today. A very, very difficult decision for us. The first person to leave us. is Kennedy. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks. Sorry to see you go, mate. Really am sorry to see you go. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done. Take care. Obviously, I'm disappointed. Basically, I just reached my level. And sometimes you just got to accept that that's as far as you can go. I don't dispute that my time had come, really. We have to lose one more. We've decided to keep all of you. We believe that all five of you deserve another shot at it. I'm absolutely overjoyed. I really thought I was on the next train home. <laughs> I can't even describe it. It's just absolutely, I'm over the moon, I really am. I'm elated to still be here. I'm just massively excited by what's coming. I believe that we can be a vegetarian cook in the MasterChef final. And I'm going to give these guys a really good run for their money. They're going to get the shock of their life. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh my God. Oh my God. Next time, the contestants are pushed to the limit. There's something exploded in here. Very, very behind. What? Entering the magical world of celebrity catering. Expectations high. The lamb's not cooked. Someone open the door! Get it, let's get it! Come on!